Today is yoga for anxiety. We're going to work on a lot of balance things today. So if you're still working on your balance, if your core strength is not super strong, grab a chair just to have handy, just to help you so that you get the correct muscular position rather than wobbling around and trying to hold your balance the whole time. So we are looking to locate particular muscles, so that ha having the chair handy will really help if you're not stable on your feet. So we're gonna start down on our backs. <clears throat> Bring your feet down, knees up, and let your knees rest in together. Take a moment to really land on the mat. Let your hips land, let your head land. <clears throat> and then find some stillness and think about roots drawing down into the ground, pulling you down, letting all of your muscles soften, beginning to feel deeply rooted into the ground. And just as if you were a flower beginning to blossom, imagine your whole body beginning to soften and glow. And reach up, feeling grounded as well as soft and floaty. Trying to hold both opposite feelings at the same time. If it's comfortable, close your eyes. Start to feel what is present in the physical body. Notice if it's easy or difficult to feel deeply grounded and rooted and soft and light at the same time. Notice if one sensation is easier than the other. And begin to intentionally slow your breath. And rather than counting or forcing with muscular action, just starting to really gently slow your breath with your intention. If it helps to keep your focus on your breath, you can say to yourself, I'm breathing in and I am very slowly breathing out. Notice if there is a natural pause in your breath. Notice where it is, if it's at the top of the inhale or the top of the exhale. And then connecting to the concept that breath is energy in the body and that anxiety is excess energy in the body. We're gonna use the breath to maybe expel a little excess energy. So very slowly breathing in, even slower breathing out, soft and slow, not forceful, and then add a gentle pause with all the air out of the body. See if you can slowly Begin to extend the pause little by little. Being careful not to extend the pause so much that you start to feel grippy and panicky in the breath. Maybe even beginning to say, I bring in fresh and I let go of what's no longer needed. I bring in fresh, I let go of what's no longer needed.
And then giving a little side sway of the knees and hips. Bring the knees in towards the chest. And take the feet up to the ceiling. Look at the feet. Start to explore the feet. So spreading the toes, curling the toes under, taking slow circles with the feet, just kind of feeling what is present in the feet. And getting our feet above the heart. If you have a particularly tight low back, you can use a chair to rest your feet on. And we're gonna warm up the core, generate some heat in the core. So beginning by setting up your base. So rather than over flattening your low back to the ground and forcing out that curve, press your hips down into the ground with your stomach muscles. Take your feet up to the ceiling, press your hips down, press your rib cage down with your stomach muscles. Watch for forcing that natural curve out of your neck. Maybe take the chin a little more to the ceiling. Once you have your stomach muscles active and strong, we're gonna inhale as we lower the right leg towards the ground. Exhale as we draw it back up. Inhale as we lower the left. Exhale as we draw it back up. Watching carefully which muscles are doing the action. Trying to keep this all in the stomach. If the low back is really starting to come to the game, you want to not bring your foot so low to the ground. This is designed to generate some heat in the core, generate some heat in the torso. Complete a full round and bring your knees in and give yourself a little hug, maybe even rock it. And then we're gonna set up our base again. So set up, pressing your hips into the ground, bring your knees over your hips, ankles in line with your knees. Fire up these stomach muscles to keep the legs here. Fire up the leg muscles to keep this base steady. Press the hip, press the rib cage down. Watch for overly tucking the chin to the neck, chest. Arms down, shoulders down. Feel the activation in your core first. And then bring your hands to your thighs. We're gonna inhale as we lengthen left side, lengthen the left arm overhead, lengthen the left leg, bring it back as we exhale. Inhale as we lengthen right side and bring it back. Legs are active, core is active, following your breath. Make this movement smaller. If your back wants to do all the work, locate the stomach muscles. Complete a full round, bring the knees into the chest. Give yourself a little hug and reset. Take the feet long, legs long, arms up overhead and reach from fingertips to toes. Take a deep breath in and exhale, sigh out of the mouth and let everything land. And then knees back into the chest, roll on over to a side and come to a tabletop position. So getting set up in tabletop, we're going to move and breathe using that long, slow exhale with a gentle pause at the end. Inhale, tabletop. Exhale towards a child at a pause. Inhale and exhale. And if it helps you, Stay on the mat and out of your head and out of what's going on in the world. Talk yourself through this. I breathe in fresh and I let go of what's no longer needed. Hmm. 
We can stay with this simple movement or if you're ready to pump it up a little. Coming to a plank with the inhale and a down dog with the exhale. Not worrying too much about the exact shape, but really focusing on the meditation movement with your breath. I breathe in fresh. I let go of what's no longer needed. Wherever you're at, maybe in a tabletop position. Land in a tabletop and we're going to work through the shoulders. So taking your hands wide and far away from your shoulders. Engage. So pull back from the wrists, engage the chest and arms. We're going to slowly lower the forearms down to the ground and then all the way up. So arms, chest and shoulders engaged. Try to keep the tension out of the neck. So if you notice your neck pulling, make the movement smaller. And if you're ready to pump this up, you're gonna tuck the toes and hover the knees, stomach engaged. Lower the knees and slowly come down to crocodile pose. One hand on top of the other, forehead down, shimmy the hips. Find the breath. Then we'll work with the breath here, lifting shoulders with the inhale and exhale lower. Again, adding that mantra, I breathe in fresh. I let go of what's no longer needed. If you're struggling to keep yourself on your mat. Try to locate all the muscles of the back. Locate the backs of the legs, locate the glutes, mid back, low back, everything engaged. And try not to take all the tension into the neck and pull the head back. And then find that place that you can comfortably hold, hover the hands, press the tops of the feet down so your legs are super engaged. Hold and breathe. Pressing the feet down, legs engaged, glutes engaged, back engaged. We're gonna take one elbow at a time towards a hip. So inhale center, exhale, take an elbow to the hip. Inhale center, exhale, elbow to hip. Small movement controlled and locating the muscles in the back. You can keep your hands down if this is too much. Try to pull the elbow towards the hip. So find the muscles in the back to pull the elbow. Rather than moving from the elbow, we're pulling the shoulder and pulling it towards the hip. And then bring it back to crocodile pose. This time, shimmy the hips. What can you let go of? Maybe taking some deep breaths in and sighing out of the mouth. And for a few breaths, thinking about if you had roots drawing you down into the ground in this position. Notice the weight of gravity drawing you down into the earth and feel the front of the body. Feel a little pressure across the front of the torso. Connect to that point where your head is touching your hands. And then slowly make your way back to a child's pose.
Come on up to a down dog and warm up your down dog in whatever way feels right for you today or your adjustment. So pedal the legs, sway the hips, move the hands in different positions. Find where you feel needs to be moved and adjusted today. Come to these familiar poses so it's easy for us to locate certain places where we commonly hold tension. And this one, Find the stillness of down dog and connect to the crown of your head being toward the ground. Turn your world upside down. Connect to your head below your heart. Maybe letting some of the weight from your chest and shoulders slowly drift to the crown of the head. As if letting all of your worries pour through and land on the mat. Then the knees look towards the hands and either float or step up. Land light if you float and forward fold with a bend in your knees. Let your torso find your thighs. Still crown of the head holding to pointing towards the ground. Take some soft movements with the neck, a little soft nose. And then a deep breath in as we rise all the way up, arms overhead, prayer to our heart for exhale. And we'll move and breathe from here. Inhale, arms overhead. Exhale, prayer to heart. You can stay with simple, adding in your mantra or adding in your gentle pause. You can start to make this more full body coming to the balls of your feet as you lift, lowering the heels and coming to a baby chair as you breathe out. As you lift your heels, try not to straighten the legs. Keep the strength in the core. Maybe even keeping the heels lifted and lowering the hips to a toe stand. Beginning to really work on your feet, work on your balance. Engage the legs. So imagine you're squeezing your knees together and pulling them apart at the same time. Engage with the whole leg. And then bring it down to a baby chair or toe stand wherever you're at, hold. Really think about your base. So really engaging the legs, the glutes, Pulling the hips a little so the low back is a little softer. There's no pulling in the low back. Soft shoulders, soft face. Breathe. And then wherever you're at, come to mountain pose. We're going to work a lot on our balance today. So begin to bring the weight onto the left leg. We're going to bring the right leg forward without throwing up the hips. So keep an eye on the hips. Engage the stomach as if you're trying to pull the hips in towards each other and then back towards the spine. Hold, right leg up and hover. And we're going to move and breathe here. Inhale as you pull the right leg up. Exhale as you push it away. If you like, you can start to pump this up to fire breath. So breathing in a little more forcefully and pushing out really forcefully or just going slow. Find where you're at. 
Hands can stay at hip if you're still wobbly. Don't need to use the arms. Pulling in, pushing out. Draw it in, send right knee past left, step back, small step, not high lunge, pyramid feet. So feet are a little bit closer together. Land your feet, find your base first. Hips are forward, engage the legs like you're trying to pull up out of the ground, trying not to lock the knees. And bring the torso forward just a little bit. Find the place where your legs feel really strong. We want to be not moving from the hips here. We're gonna take the right hand up to the right shoulder. We're gonna open the right elbow out and then bring it in towards midline. So we're really looking for a left oblique. Inhale, open. Exhale, move back. Draw the elbow towards the left foot. If you like, you can really put your fingertips into this left oblique area. Find it. Breathe in as you open. Exhale as you twist and bring the right elbow in. Just keeping those hips still, keeping those legs stable. Inhale, open. Exhale, twist. Move from the right shoulder so that you're engaging all down the right side also. Bring it over to the left, hold. You can lengthen the right arm, push a little further. Legs locked, you should be able to feel energy from the right heel all the way to the right to fingertips. Press, press, press. And then bring the right arm up in a big circle. Big, slow circle, base, soft. Nice, slow breath. Hands to hips. Slowly bring the weight onto the left leg. Right knee all the way up to stand. Cross over left, sit it down. So right leg remains active. Pull the right knee down towards the ground with the muscles of the leg. Soften the low back. Lengthen the spine. Breathe in balance. And then slowly unravel. Mountain pose and tap out the feet. Connect to the breath. Inhale, arms overhead. Exhale, prayer to heart. Bring your prayer to heart. Find your feet. Weight onto the right leg. Left leg comes forward without moving the hips. So really pull the stomach in towards the spine. Right leg active, left leg active. Hold. And pulling up with the knee. Inhale, exhale, push the heel away. Leg active both ways. and left knee past the right, small step back, pyramid pose. Find your base first, really strong, steady legs pulling up out of the ground and then torso forward. Watch for locking at the knees. Left hand 
comes to left shoulder. Left elbow draws out to the left. Inhale, exhale, draw it in. So hips stay still. This movement is coming from right oblique and all the way down left side. So imagine you're moving from the shoulder, not the elbow. Inhale, open. Exhale, twist over. Legs super strong, glutes super strong. Bring the elbow over to the right, reach the left hand out, long, long, long. Feel the energy from the left heel all the way to the left fingertips. Push, 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 push. Stomach engaged, legs engaged. Slowly bring the torso up, big slow circles with the left arm. Slow your breath. Slow your heart rate. Hand to hip, weight onto the right leg. Slowly bring the left leg all the way back to where we came. Engage. Left ankle crosses over right knee. Press the left knee down with the muscles of the leg. Pull up from the tailbone with all of the muscles of the stomach. Squeeze the glutes, soften the low back, reach through the crown of the head, soften the shoulders, breathe, balance. Slowly unravel, mountain pose, tap out the feet. And then connect to the breath, inhaling arms overhead. Uh, exhaling, prayer to heart. Pausing at your heart center. Imagining your each exhale is lifting the weight off your chest and shoulders. Drawing in fresh through the arms and then exhaling what is no longer needed. Hold your prayer at heart center. And having your chair handy. So making sure that you can reach for your chair easily if you're using it to balance. If you don't have a chair, you can use a block at the high end. So making sure you're set up first, you can reach the chair easily. Hands to prayer, left leg stays active, little bend in the leg. This time we're going to bring right knee up, bend the left leg more, open the right knee to the right. Hold it here, and then slowly, 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 engaging both legs, step open to a warrior two straight. Find your base. So pulling up out of the ground with all of the muscles of the legs. Lengthen the arms. Moving and breathing here. Inhale, lengthen. Arms overhead, lengthen left leg. Exhale, open and sink the hips. Legs engaged, toes not gripping. Maybe a little pause in the exhale. Lengthen the legs and bring the hands to the hips. Start to come towards a triangle shape. So really engaging, pulling up from the heels all the way to the hips, getting really long and then start to engage the torso. Hands to that space in between the rib cage and the hip. Lengthen the torso and then tilt it a teeny bit over that left leg. So this space here should be nice and engaged underneath the right fingers. Left hand out, 
thinking about this space, we're going to take the left hand over to the left, past the left leg, and then lift and lower. Lift and lower the shoulder. Legs engaged, legs not moving, hips not moving, really finding this space in between the ribcage and the hip. And then left hand left, inhale as you come up, exhale as you bring it over and in towards center. Inhale up, exhale, left hand left. So we're really thinking about moving more with the torso, but just using the hand as a guide. You can even take the hand out of the game and think about just the torso. Scoot up the left hand up and over, reverse your triangle. Hold and breathe. So really lengthening through that left side. Slowly bend the left leg and find your left hand on the chair for balance. We are blocked for balance. One thing to do when we're doing these exercises, you're gonna come all the way down to the floor. You're gonna compromise the muscle shape. It's gonna be much harder to work the muscles without compromising something in the hips and low back. So we wanna lift our torso up so it's nice and low. Lengthening, find a half moon pose. So set up first, make sure this torso is nice and engaged right at that spot we were just working in between the ribcage and the hip. Right leg is very engaged. Left leg a little bend so it's also engaged. Thinking about the entire leg and the hip and the torso being long, we're gonna lower the left he right heel down towards the ground. Inhale as we lift it, exhale as we lower. Watch your balance, engage your core. Bring the left heel up, lowering it slowly towards the chair or towards your nose. Hold it here. And we're gonna draw it towards the nose and then back to where it was. Towards the nose and back to where it was. If this is too much, bend the, left, bend the knee and bring the knee towards the nose and press the heel away. Try not to sink into that left hand. You're using it to balance, not take all your weight. You want to challenge your muscles. Back to half moon. Maybe lifting left fingertips, lengthening, challenging your balance. Bend the left knee and slowly lower back to warrior two. Find your base. Slowly lift and lower the left heel. Strong legs, pull the heel up with the muscle of the calf and lower it slowly with the muscle of the calf. Hands can be a hips, they can be out at warrior two. Back to a warrior two. And then either returning to lifting the heel or if you're ready to really strengthen the legs, we're gonna push off the ball of the left foot and lift. Land light, push and lift, push and lift. Stomach engage, land light. And then we're going to big circle with the right arm. 
And then with the second circle, step back, arms up overhead, and then fold onto the chair. Lend the hands on the chair, pull the hips back, find length in the low back. And bend the knees and keep them straight. Find your breath. And then keeping the chair, come on up to stand, keep the chair at the right position to be able to reach it. We're gonna step left leg up. Engage the left leg, slowly draw it open. Engage, engage, bend the knee. And then sending it back, slow as you can. Into warrior two legs. Find your worry to base. Make sure your chair is handy. Legs very engaged, toes not gripping. Inhale, lift and lengthen. Exhale, open and sink the hips. Lift and lengthen. Straighten up that right leg. Arms down. Find the space between the rib cage and the hip with the left hand. Right arm reaches, 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 and pushes the torso a teeny bit over that right leg. Right arm down. <laughs> nice and strong and engaged here. Right arm opens. And then back. Inhale, open. Exhale, back. Find that space. Make sure it's nice and strong, right between the rib cage and the hip. Legs are not locked around the knees, but super strong and drawing up out of the ground. So we're not sinking into any hips. We're not going towards the ground. We're trying to locate muscles and find that mind-body connection. Open the right arm to the left, to the right. Hold nice and strong in the torso. We're gonna lower, inhale, center, and then lower in the front of the leg. Inhale, center, lower on the outside of the leg. And if the arm is tired, bring the arm out of it. Just think about moving the shoulder and the torso. Scoop that right arm up and over, reverse your triangle. Take the tension out of the neck. Bend the right knee and slowly bring the right hand over to the chair, coming up to a half moon pose. So set up your base nice and strong first. Find the obliques, engage. Right leg tightly engaged. Not taking the weight into the right arm. Holding your balance with your own muscles. Inhale, lift the heel. Exhale as you lower. Leg engaged. We're not flopping it around. Watch for compromising this ribcage space. We're just working the leg and hip. Bring the left heel up. Draw it in towards the nose. Slow, hold and hover. And then we're gonna inhale, pull it in. Exhale, push back. Inhale, pull in. Exhale, push back. Torso stays solid and strong. It was not through the back, but through the leg. Bend the knee if this is too much. Hold a worry too. Maybe lift up. Yes. Great. 
hold the half moon pose. Maybe lift up the right hand. Bend the right knee nice and slow. Land in your warrior two. Big circle with the left hand, left arm, and then step it in. Land your hands on the turn. Sink your feet back. Find some length in the low back. Maybe bend the knees. Let the tension out of the head. Slowly inhale as you rise up, mountain pose. You go into runner stretch if you do not have the chair. You're just gonna go run a stretch on the ground. If you have the chair, bring the right heel onto the chair. Land it and then feel like you're pulling the heel back to the hip without letting it move. Bend the left knee, find the back of the left. You can hold this nice and static. You can move through the foot. Find some movement in the back of the leg. <clears throat> Place the right foot on the chair. Press into the ball of the foot, lower the heel. So ball of the foot on the heel, on the chair. Start to take some movement. So maybe you're just working through back of the lower calf. Maybe you start to come up onto both balls of the feet and bring the hips forward. Start to play a little with where you're working through your own holding patterns. Working without a tear, run a stretch. You can place a block in under your heel, working through the calf. Or you can just come up onto both feet, work through the legs, like so. And then switch sides. Left heel onto the chair, run a stretch. So really feel like you're pulling that heel back towards the hips. You're activating the leg. Pressing through the ball of the foot as well. And you can take this static holding, nice slow static stretch, or you can move the foot. Slowly bring the ball of the left foot onto the chair, lower through the heel, pull up. Find where you're working, maybe starting to lift both. Maybe starting to pull right hip forward. Go slow, work through where you have strength in the muscles. So not just flopping around in joints, make sure your muscles are engaged. We're strengthening muscles. And then bring it back to mountain pose. Feel your legs, tap your feet out. We're gonna take a swish side to side. So loose this time, legs loose, loosen and soften, and then take hands so that they tap the top of your fist, just tapping, letting go. And think about cleansing your space. So maybe we breathe in fresh and we let go all of that excess energy and now we're kind of sweeping it out, out away from us, letting it go. And then this time, inhale up and swan dive it down. Touch the ground, step back, 
almost a plank. Bend the knees, hover the knees, and engage the legs. So take this into chest, arms, and legs. Really engage legs as if you're squeezing a block between your legs without letting your legs move. And then lower the knees. We're gonna work through runners. Oh, sorry. We're gonna work through low lunge, Anjani Asana. But if you're working your half split or your full split, our legs are warm. So start to look at where your legs are at. So bringing the left leg forward, we're going to move through our hips. Engage legs, bring it forward, sinking the hips back, starting to feel where your own legs are at, and then maybe wiggling through to your splits. If you get your splits, you can hold static, you can lift and lower, engaging the legs. Slowly pull the left leg back, runner's lunge, and switch sides. So going back to your knees, bringing the right leg forward, low lunge first, and then pulling back, runner's lunge. So moving through your legs. Another time, another good time to use your blocks also, so you have a little support. Moving forward, pulling back, finding your legs. Feeling where you feel strong. And then maybe moving in to your full splits, wiggling the right leg forward, finding where you're at. And again, use your blocks here. Pull up and pull down, moving through where your legs are at. And then bring right knees back, swing over to a hip and come to a seat. Take the legs out and wiggle the legs, let them go. Loosen, soften, let them jiggle. Get that somatic reset going in the muscles. And pedal the feet out. Find a comfortable position for your hips, your back. You can use your blocks for support. We really want everything, upper body to be comfortable. We're just working through the legs. We're gonna point the toes. And then pull the toes back, thinking about our feet. We balanced a lot, so we're just going to work through our feet. Pull the toes back and pull the toes in. And pull the toes out, really engaging our feet. Pull in and pull out. And then point the toes away, pull in and pull out. Find the muscles of the feet. Really feel the muscles of the feet. And then find a way that you can comfortably sit so you can see your left foot and get your right hand to it. Take the palm of your hand and make circles on the arch of the foot. So circles around the arch of the foot with the palm of the hand. Bring some circulation here. And then over the top of the foot. And then switch sides. Left foot, palm of the hand, round the arch. So circle in around the arch. Nice firm pressure. Really bringing awareness to your feet. Especially when we balance so much, we work our feet hard. So it's nice to bring some attention to them, some warmth, some circulation. 
and we are almost there. So start to think about, circles on the top of the feet, start to think about where you would like to be for your final resting pose. If you have the chair handy, maybe you wanna have your feet up on the chair. It's a great way to get all the blood flow from your feet down to your heart. Start to locate where you would like to be for your final resting pose. Start to adjust. Start to land on the ground. Think about your feet. Give them some wiggles. Feel some softness and looseness, maybe some extra energy in your feet. So think about drawing the energy all the way down to the feet. So as you're breathing in now, passing the shoulders and thinking about our feet. So as we balance, we kind of send roots down into the ground through our feet and then we lengthen up just like a tree. It's often why we practice tree pose. We think about roots through the feet and we pull up as if we're a long, tall trunk and then our branches extend. Thinking about lengthening. So now thinking about our roots, whatever parts of our body that are touching the ground or support, think about roots tying us down. Really rooting down, tying us down to the ground. A few more breaths, drawing in fresh and releasing out what's no longer needed intentionally. Draw in fresh, I breathe in fresh, and I release what's no longer needed. And then adjust a gentle pause, a couple of breaths. Finishing up our practice, knowing our breath. And then really beginning to land in our full resting pose. No more muscle engagement. No more intentional breath. Soft muscles of the face. Let the tongue land. I'm going to read as you begin to settle in about a lotus flower from The Golden Present by Sri Swami Sachananda. Think about listening to these words, not so much with a cognitive head, but with our spiritual self. So imagining allowing these words to rest inside us without our head getting in the way. Plus, listening with your spiritual heart rather than your head. Live like a lotus in the water. The lotus is considered to be very holy, divine flower, not just because of its beauty, but because of its qualities. A lotus flower glow, grows in very shallow water, usually in a muddy area. Though it comes out of the mud and mire, it rises as a beautiful flower that lives in the water without being affected by it. The lotus flower is always given as an example for one who wants to live spiritually in the world. It is said, live like a lotus in the water. The lotus leaf is right in the water, but it is never moistened by the water. When you pick it up, it's completely dry. It never gets wet. If you throw a little water over it, the water will roll off and scatter around like pearls. A person can live like a lotus being in the world, but not affected by it. You can always express your natural beauty, though you may grow in a dirty place. Nothing from the outside needs affect you. The lotus flower turns its head towards the sun always. That means it always turns towards the light and receives the light constantly. So you can say that it's an ever enlightened flower.
So thinking about your roots drawing you down into the ground. You can think about these being your roots in darkness, your roots and things that you've struggled with. Begin to think of your physical body as softening and glowing and becoming flower-like. Reaching up towards the light as if being recharged by sunlight. Letting your burdens go softening and being held by the ground below you. If you have more time that you can spend in your resting pose, please take the time that your body needs. We need to finish up at the 60 minute mark. We're going to begin to bring wiggles to the fingers and the toes. And if you have your feet on the chair, please bring a little circulation to your legs with your hands, little circles on the thighs and bring your knees in with your hands just so that you don't pull anything odd in your back nice and soft to the body. Bring your knees in towards the chest and slowly make your way over to a fetal position on your side. Thinking about those roots that we had into the ground, mud into our lotus roots, drawing us down into darkness, finding our nutrients in our darkness. I'm thinking like soft about softening like a flower. And thinking perhaps about how difficult it may be to soften like a flower around the muscles of the chest and shoulders. So when we have feelings of worry and anxiousness, often we close in around our heart center. We draw in in protection because it makes us feel safe. So rather than thinking of lifting and leaning from the heart because you think nothing will ever go wrong, begin to think about just having a strong back. So think about the opposite side of your heart. Think about your back here. So your heart center, your chest center. Think about the metaphysical heart, not your heart heart, your physical beating heart, your metaphysical heart in the center of your chest. Think about the opposite side. And if you have to, bring your hand here so you can feel the warmth of it. And then think about where your hand would be on your back if it were exactly opposite the other hand. Think about this space. Think about it being strong. Think about having your own back. So rather than thinking about leading with your heart because you think that nothing will ever go wrong, think about leading with your heart because you know you have your own back. Begin to think about the concept of being able to connect to a familiar comforting pose when things go wrong. Think about your own strength. Know that you can get through.
Think about all the times that you have gotten yourself through without cognitively bringing memory to mind, but knowing that you have pulled yourself through, knowing that you are strong. And then perhaps thinking about some of those weights in the chest, some of those heavy burdens in the chest and shoulders and maybe allowing them to soften to the ground. And then slowly bring your way up to a seated position. Bring your hands to prayer at heart space. have a teacher that teaches a lot about becoming whole and accepting all of the parts of ourselves. So as we judge parts of ourselves as negative and positive, we tend to sever ourselves. We tend to create these severs in ourselves, these cuts almost in our body, cuts in our soul. And we're pushing one side away and pulling one side up. And we don't want to be what we were in the past, but we want to be this kind of person. And she talks a lot about bringing ourselves into a whole being. Knowing that I am the girl I was, as well as the girl I will be. I am all of these parts. And she talks about the word and a lot. I am that and, I am that and, I am that and. So learning to accept these parts of ourselves, sitting with them, learning to accept them so that they feel less and less of an emotional burden, but just a part of fact. So as we come to this position, we bring our hands together at prayer and we bring our prayer to our heart. Feel all these nerve endings in our hands, touching. Feel our hands touching our metaphysical heart, our chest center. Breathe here as if learning to become whole. Every time we come back to this pose, thinking of being all of the parts of yourself, being whole and complete. May we all know a little peace and a lot of love. Thank you for joining me.